Hi guys, welcome to this new video and it's about mathematics and yes, it's something new to my channel which, I'm, which I do not normally do and it's time to begin doing this paper so it's a mathematics A non-calculator paper Monday 11 June 2012 I'm going to be skipping all the instructions hoping you already know what they are and yes, let's begin so these are the equations we might use in the test paper and now we shall ba uh, bang on to the questions and the first question is a suitable data data collection table so now let me just get the screen right so we can start doing it all right so it says sam wants to find out the types of film people like best he's going to ask whether they like comedy action sci science fiction or musicals best design a suitable table for a data collection sheet he would he could use to collect this information so now the most appropriate thing there would be is to write down uh, the type of film first and you know that it would be a frequency table because or frequency tally table because the person has to count up how many there are tally and then like that and frequency just imagine it's a short form then you want to write down comedy and please excuse my poor handwriting action and sci-fi and musicals and now for each one of them, just draw a line like that and that should get you the full two marks that you need to uh, get that grade that you want and don't lose these silly marks because they're really easy to attain so now let's crack on to the next question alright the next question is Sam collects his data by asking 10 students in his class at school this might not be a good way to find out the types of films people like best one reason why it may not be the best type of film is because it may be biased. If he's asking from the from people at his school, people at his school generally, so imagine you're 15 years old and you go to school, then generally the, the age group that you're with generally likes the same type of films. For example, I'm a 15 year old and I enjoy watching generally science fiction films or even action films which are enjoyable to watch and that should get you your mark just right, it's biased and just give a short explanation. And this question is, the diagram shows a patio in the shape of a, a rectangle. The patio is 3.6 meters long and 3 meters wide. Matthew is going to cover the patio with paving slabs. Each paving slab is a square of side 60 centimeters. Matthew buys 32 of the paving slabs. Does Matthew buy enough paving slabs to cover the p patio? So now what we have to do is we have to find the area. So let's just do, let's, let me just get the screen right again. So we now we've give, we've been given the two sides. So let's do it. Three point six times three would be uh, ten point eight meters squared. No, I am not using calculator. I've just calculated it in my head. Uh, so it's ten point eight meters squared. And Matthew buys thirty two of these. We each with a square side of sixty. So let's convert the sixty into meters. So it's zero point six. Then we can times it by zero point six. So we get zero point three six. Then we want to do the 0 0.36 times 32. And I can't do this in my head, so I'll do it on the side. 0 0.36 times by 32. To make it easier, just convert the 30, 30, 0 0.36 into 36 and then do multiplication like this. 6, 6, 18, 9, 10, 72. So 1. Five, two, one, one. So it's eleven pound. I'm sorry, not eleven pound. Uh, it covers eleven point five two meters squared, and so the answer is no. He does not have enough to cover it, as you can see, and that answers the question, and that should get you your full three marks. And now we can head over to the next maths question. Uh, and don't forget, even you've times this by 100, so make sure you divide by 100 in the end. This is where that decimal comes in from. So don't forget that, and don't lose your silly marks. And now, time to head to the next question. The paving slabs cost £8.63 each. Work out the co total cost of 32 paving slabs. To work out the total cost of 32 paving slabs, do what I done last time. Convert the 8.63 into 863 and times that by 32 this is the method I use because I find it really easy but you may use your own method if you may if you want to so 3 times 2 is 6 6 times 2 is 12 and then 16 and 17 so that's 6 1 1 16 6 7 
276 pound and 16 pence and that's your answer and that should get you your easy three marks and in these questions they're generally just throwing you the marks so make sure you take those marks because it will accumulate for a lot afterwards so for this question I'm not gonna really bother how much is the fixed charge so now the fixed charge is where the point is zero miles because the fixed charge is the charge that remains even if you don't even if you don't travel a single mile and that's 10 so the answer is literally 10 for this question 10 now time to head to the next one Ed uses a van to deliver parcels for each parcel Ed delivers it costs £1.50 for each mile there is no fixed charge compare the cost of having a parcel delivered by Bill with the cost of having a parcel delivered by Ed Yeah, and for this question, they expect us to know, uh, to, to draw a graph. So let's just draw the graph now. So let's go to, let's press this. Then let's go to screen scratch, sketch, and draw the graph. My one won't be as accurate, but I can try and use this ruler. No, I'm sorry. I don't know how to use a ruler on this question. Okay. So it says £1.50 for each mile. So let's just imagine it starts about there. Um, so let's just, I'm just going to draw it estimately. Please don't do this in your real exam. So to so draw it as an estimate. And then it says compare the cost of having a parcel delivered f bill with the cost of having a parcel delivered by Ed. And how we would answer this question is we would literally go to, and let me just write it for you. So screen sketch and... Having a parcel delivered by Ed, bill with the cost of having parcel delivered by Ed. So initially, Ed would be cheaper than Bill because Ed charges one pound fifty for each mile, and there is no fixed charge. <coughs> However, at a certain point which if I estimate the graph it will be like that at a certain point I'm guessing 20 so after 20 miles the cost of Ed's van is greater and that's all you need to get your three marks because you've, draw you've drawn the graph you found out the point at which, which, which one costs more than the other and you've stated uh, what happens at the start and what happens at the end and that's that's important for you to write and it'll give you the full marks so now next question here are the speeds in miles per hour of 16 cars draw an ordered stem and leaf diagram for these speeds so let me just bring up screen sketch as you can see we have all these values all we have to do is draw an unordered stem and leaf diagram and then we'll draw ordered ones so three four and five so 31, there's one there, there's a 2 there, there's a, a 3 here, there's a 9 here, there is a 6 here, there is a 5 here, there is a 3 here, there is a 2 as well, okay, 2 here, there's a 9 for the 2, a 4 for the 5, a 3 for the 4, a 4, a 6, uh, two, nine, five, and eight. So now we just have to order this unordered one. This is unordered. So now let's order it. So simply, it's two, three, four, five, two and nine. There's, this one, there's only one value. So let's order this one now. One, three, five, six, nine. Now let's order this one. Three, three. Four, six, nine, and let's order this one now. Five, two, four, five. Oh, it's already ordered for us. So about and to cross check, we haven't done a row. Let's just count how many: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So, so as you can see, we might have missed a few. Um, extremely sorry about that. Let me just re recheck for you. One minute. Right guys, I got what was the problem, and let me just redo it for you, I'm assuming, sorry about this, it's my first maths video, so I'm a little curious on how well I'm going to do, 
So 2, 3, 4, 5. So 29. Let me do this again. So there's a 9 there. Let's just do it from here. 3 and 1, 5 and 2, 4 and 3, 4 and 9, 3 and 6, 3 and 5, 3 and 3, 5 and 4, 4 and 3, 4 and 4, 4 and 6, 4 and 2, 3 and 9, 5 and 5, and 4 and 8. So as you can see, let me count this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. As you can see now, it's right. It seems that I missed out a few values last time. Um, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is already in order. Then, then let's order this. 2, 3, 3, 4, 6, 9. Let's order this. 3, 1, 3, 5, 6, 9. And this is 2, 9. And now it's time to write a key. 2, 9 represents don't ever write equals to sign or you might lose a mark don't ever ever write an equals to sign just write 2 dash 9 represents 29 miles per hour or just miles per hour would be fine as well and that will get get you the full four marks is it three marks next question question five you can work out the amount of medicine c ml to give to a child by using the formula blah 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 M is the age of the child, A is adult dose, a child is 30 months old, an adult's dose is 40 ml, work out the amount of medicine you can give to the child. So let's just, let me just go to screen, sketch again. And now, what we have, all we have to do is, we've got, we've got the child is 30 months old, okay, and we have to work out the medicine to give to the child. So C, so we need to just plug the values into the formula, so M is the ch age of the child in months, so it's 30. Adults dose is 40 and divide that by 150. Three, 530 is going to 150 and we can simplify that to 8. And so the answer is 8. And it's a simple 2 marks to get actually. Don't don't lose simple marks like this. And now time to head to question 6. Uh, here are the ingredients needed to make 12 shortcakes. Liz makes some shortcakes. She uses 25 ml of milk. How many short, shortcakes does Liz make? So... Simply for this question, all we have to do is just use simple scale factor skills. So 25 ml of milk, so you 25 divided by the original amount which we used, which was 10. So it's 2.5 scale factor, I imagine, and then times that by 12. And and if you times that by 12, you get 30. If uh, I done this in my head, so just do 12 times 2, and do 12 times 0 0.5, and add them together, so you get 30. <coughs> Now, work out the greatest number of shortcakes Robert can make. Uh, so, all you have to do is just find out each one, each one of the multipliers. So, 500 divided by 50 is 10. 1,000 divided by 200 is 5. And 1,000 divided by 2 is 5 again for the flour. And five, 500 ml of milk divided by... 10 which is 50 so she she can only make 5 times the actual amount so 5 times 12 is 60 and so she can only make 60 shortcakes because she does not have enough uh, butter to make any more than that and that's all it is next question now uh, it says buses to acting so this is a, a common question which comes up and it's a, generally a lowest common multiple question so how you tackle this question is 24 minutes, 20 minutes, and so when do they leave at the same time? So 24, the factors of 24 would be 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, times 3. So how do I know? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 3 is 24. And 20 would be 2 times 2, which is 4, times 5, which is 20. And to find the lowest common multiple, first, cancel out all the ones that are the same, okay? After you cancel out all the ones that are the same, use use only one of the set of numbers. So, so just, so for, don't use these ones, but use these ones. So, use all these values, and you'll get it. So, do 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, and you'll get your lowest common multiple. So, 2 times 3 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24, and 24 times 5 is 120. And so 120 minutes is the lowest common multiple. 
so that's two hours so if you add add two hours onto nine you get 11 a.m and so that's the answer 11 a.m and that's all it is now let's do the next bit expanding now these are the most simple questions and generally worth the least so don't waste time on it if you can't do it but it's generally easy so let's do three times two which is six and the y that remains minus five times three which is fifteen so six y minus fifteen now factorize this so what can we bring out and that's in both we can bring out the x okay but we can't bring out y we can bring out four because it's a multiple of both so two x plus y that's it and to check if you have done it right you can cross check and if you can make that into that and that into that vice versa then you know you've got it right make h the subject of the formula so 10 t is equal to gh multiply 10 on both sides first and then divide it by g on both sides and you get 10 t divided by g which is equal to h that's all it is now next question is question 9 describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle a onto triangle b so for this question we just we we know it's a rotation you can tell it's a rotation all right you need to state how many degrees it is by and whether it's anti-clockwise or clockwise in this case it's clockwise you can say it's anti-clockwise as well and to find the center of rotation you need to pick two points on both the uh both the different uh, triangles pick a point okay and then f uh, make make a way that it, that they both connect to the same point but they go opposite direction so so a has to go from this point to the right and it can get to the center and b from b from the bottom point of b you have to go one to the left to get there so you know that the center point is this so the center point is three three i know some of you may not have understood my method but but I, I suggest you check online, but, um, BBC has really good answers. So the way I do it is I, I know that if it's 180 degrees, you know that whatever way you go from one, you have to go the opposite way to the other. So for example, if you're going one, one, le one right and two up, you know, you know it's going to be 90 degrees right from that point. I mean, 180 degrees from that point. So you want to go two more up and then one right. So this point is this point and this point is this point. It might be a little confusing, but search online. I, I strongly suggest it. And now let's answer this question. Th these tend to be the ones with lots of marks because they tend to throw people off. So we just need to find out uh, the percentage of credit card on the value and then add it on. So credit card charge 2.25% of the ticket. So 2.25 over 100 times 60. So if we do that, we get 22.5 times uh, 6, which is... 22.5 times 6 which is one minute 13 so it's 135 over 100 and so the booking charge is one pound 35 pence and you have to add the booking fee on which is two pound uh, which makes it two pound and 15 pence so this is real tickets okay, and now let's do cheap train so 1.5% off the price 60 so it's the same thing so 1.5 times 60 is the same thing as doing 15 times 6 and you know that 15 times 6 is 90 so 90 over 100 is equal to 0 0.9 plus the booking fee which is 1.9 and that gives you a, total, a grand total of £2.80 and so you can come to a conclusion that real tickets is cheaper than cheap trains so you know that it's not it's not cheap trains and all you write for your answer is real tickets is cheaper than cheap trains by 65 pence and you shall get full marks now heading to question 11 these are the algebraic questions that you're me meant to make it yourself although these are fairly straightforward the new GCC which is 91 is far more harder than this so you should understand it or you end up doing a, a foundation tier which I'm sure none of you want to do so let's do that plus that plus that plus that so 3x minus 15 plus 2x plus 2x plus 24 plus 2x let's just add that all together so that would be 5x 7x and 9x and if you add the minus 15 and plus 24 you get a plus 9 yeah a plus 9 
and you know that all is equal to 360 so 9x would be equal to 351 and so x would be 351 divided by 9 which is which is 350 well you know 9 times 4 is 360 so 39 times 9 would make 351 for those that don't get it just just do it like the bus stop method it's a pretty useful way to solve it so 9 times 3 is 27 so you have 8 remaining and 9 so 39 so that's how I got 39 and the value of x is 39 and so you so it's worth 4 marks as I'm sure 3 marks okay so it's it's fairly straightforward if you understand the question and now heading to the next question which is about uh, finding the depth so Jane has a carton of orange juice, the carton is in the shape of a cuboid the depth of the orange in the juice is, is 8 centimeters. so you know that this point is 8 centimeters. so Jane closes the carton then she turns the carton over so that it stands on the shaded face work out the depth in centimeters of the orange juice now so first we need to find the volume, how much of the orange juice is there so we do 6 times 10 times 8 which is 480 centimeter cubed which is how much uh, juice there is in there already so 480 centimeter cubed is how much is in there okay and if, if we flip, flip it on this side let's see what, what it would look like so it would look like that, that that it would look as it is just imagine but all the sides would have changed because then now this to this would be six centimeters yeah the height would be 10 centimeters now and the base would be 20 centimeters so now we want to find we want to find the new height so all we have to do well the depth is the height in this case so what we want to do is 480 divided by 20 which is equal to 24 and then we want to divide it further by 6 and it's 4 so you know that the new depth is 4 and how I got this is you know that the base and the width is uh, 20 and 6 and now you want to find the height so uh, so all you have to do is divide it by the two remaining values so 6 and 20 so imagine you're doing 20 times 6 times x is equal to 480 I'm sorry, I can't write off the page 120x is equal to 480 and then you rearrange so you get x is equal to 4 now heading on to the next question which is 13 for this question what we have to do is we have to use our knowledge of the formula which is n minus 2 or is it n minus 1 yes n minus 1 times 180 so what this formula enables us to do is know how many sides there are in a, in a shape uh, the total angle so you know that there's 6 sides so 6 minus 1 is equal to 5 and then that times by 180 is equal to 900 so you you know that the total of these is 900 yep yeah, so and so what we have to do now is work out the angle of uh, the, we have to work out this angle and this angle and 360 minus that will give us this so what we have to do now is do the 900 divided by the 1, 2, 3, 6 sides 150 degrees is each side and another way we can work it out, this is, imagine there were lines going off like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <coughs> so 6. So the exterior angle would be, alright, it seems like I've done the formula wrong, I've just realized. So let's just go back to square 1. The formula is actually, let me show you, it's actually n minus 2 times 180. There we go, and no, we know that there's six sides, so four times one eighty is seven hundred twenty, and seven hundred twenty divided by six is one hundred and twenty degrees. So each side is one hundred and twenty degrees. Uh, same thing for this. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sides. So eight minus two is six. Six times one eighty is uh, one thousand eighty, as I'm sure. Uh, and then you divide it by how many sides there, which is eight, and you should get one, two. And so it's 24, 135 degrees, add these together, and you get 255 degrees, then do 360 minus that, and you get your answer, which is 105 degrees. 
so x is equal to 105 degrees i hope you understand that okay okay all right that was pretty straightforward i just messed up the formula it says work out the real distance between l and h sadly i do not have a ruler so i cannot do this but all you have to do is just get a ruler and measure from l to h measure the bearing of h from l so same so what you have to do here is you have to find the angle of h from l so measure this angle over here if you can see that this angle over here this n l h that's the angle you have to find and a b a bolt b is i'm not going to bother doing this question because it re requires me to draw and uh, i don't have anything accurate to help me draw <coughs> harry grows tomatoes <coughs> this year he puts his tomato plants in two groups group a and group b harry gave fertilizer to the tomato plants in group a he did not give fertilizer to the tomato plants in group b Harry weighed 60 tomatoes from group A. The cumulative frequency shows information about these weights and there's a cumulative frequency diagram. Use the graph to find estimate for the median weight. And all you have to do for this question is look look how many there are in total. So there's 60. Do 60 divided by 2 is 30. So you just draw a line like that. A line like that. And don't do it like this. Use a ruler. So according to me, it should be somewhere near 170 grams. And that's all it is. And that's the easy mark there. Alright, it says the 60 tomatoes from group A had a minimum weight of 153, had a maximum weight of 186. Use this information in the cumulative frequency graph to draw a box plot for the 60 tomatoes in group A. So let me just zoom out a little so I can use that. I'm sorry if it's a bit too small. I'm going to have to go back and forth for that now. Let me just zoom out a little more and let's begin. So. So all we have to do now, we just have to draw it now. So 153 would roughly be about there. 186 will roughly be about there. And then now we want to use the cumulative frequency. We know that the answer to this was somewhere near 170. So we know that the median is 170. Now we need to find the upper quartile and lower quartile. So upper quartile is 3 quarters. So 3 quarters of 60 is 45. So almost there. So if you go straight from there and go down you get about 175 so 175 is almost there and and the quarter of 60 is 15 which is about almost there so you just want to go 15 15 from there and you want to go down that's 165 which is almost about there and you just draw a box plot like that like that i hope that helps guys that's what it is and now let's go down and it says we have to compare Sadly, I don't have my original box plot because I've done a sketch. But if if I remember correctly, the median was 170. So you can say that the that distribution of weight. So group A has a greater median of tomato weight than the than group B. However, <coughs> group A has a has a larger interquartile range than group B. As I'm sure, if we actually drew it, you'd find that the interquartile range was from there to there so it's upper quarter minus lower quarter and i think it was almost about 10 whereas over here it's about eight so it's it's less than this which means that the data is more or less is less spread which is better because it gives an accurate answer all right now let's do this question just say simplify that so now we we know the for, the general formula is is a to the power of x times by y is equal to a to the power of xy so in this case m to the power of minus <coughs> minus 2 times about by 3 5 you get you should get m to the power of minus 10 that's all it is factorize that just find two values that multiply minus 10 and add to make 3 so which two values do that 5 and minus 2 so x plus 5 and x minus 2 and that's all it is guys write down the value of 10 to the power of 0 anything to the power of 0 is 1 so the answer is 1 why is 6.7 times 10 to the power of minus 5 is an ordinary ordinary number well you know that it's to the power of minus 5 so all you have to do is 6.7 becomes 0 point does so count how many 5 0 1 2 3 4 and leave 1 out and do 6 7 and that's all it is just counting, pure counting skills. 
So now next one is work out the value of 3 times 10 to the power of 7 times 9 times 10 to the power of 6. For this question, all you have to do is do 3 times 9, which is 27, and then do 10 to the power of 7 plus 6, because there's a power to the 6 here, so 27 times 10 to the power of 13, but we have to convert that into a standard form, which means it should become 2.7 times 10 to the power of 14, and that's all it is, guys. Now, skipping to the next part, okay, alright, let's do this question. Alright, triangle ABC is drawn on a centimeter grid. A is the point 22, B is the point 62, C is the point 55. Triangle PQ is an enlargement of triangle ABC with scale factor half and center zero zero. Work out the area of triangle PQ. So we know that the scale factor is a half. So what we can do is we can half all the sides. So we can make the, the base half. Then we can make the height half, which is which would make it 1.5. Or we can find this area. And then we can use scale factor, area factor. So we'll go for the second part. So we'll find the area of ABC first. So area of ABC would be 4 times 3 times a half, which would make it 6 centimeters squared. But we want area factor. This is scale factor. So we need to square it. So let's square that. It's a quarter. So we need to do a quarter of 6. So it's 1.5 centimeters squared. So the answer is 1.5 centimeter squared that's all it is guys all right next question work out the probability tree diagram so let's just draw that out now all right complete the probability that she wins at who plays 0.4 so the chance of not winning <coughs> is 0.6 because you do 1 minus 0 0.4 which is 0 0.6 1 minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7 so it says 0 0.3 wendy wins and again 0 0.7 she doesn't win so work out the point that Wendy wins at Hula and also wins at the coconut shy. So what we have to do is we have to go here and here. So we just have to do 0 0.4 times 0 0.3, which is 0 0.12. And since we're using an and, we have to multiply. Don't forget, if it was or, you add. If it's and, you multiply. Don't forget that. Alright, now, next bit. Solve the simultaneous equations. Now these are the ones that give good marks. Some of them include quadratic simultaneous equations, which are the really high end marks which could come up in your paper, especially the grade 91 papers that are the new ones. <coughs> For this one, we just want to multiply them so the minus and the plus are equal. So let's multiply the top one by 3. So 15x plus 6y is equal to 33. Then multiply this by 2. So 8x minus 6y is equal to 36. So this plus y minus 6y cancel. Then we do add that and we add that. So it becomes 23x is equal to 69. Yes, and x is equal to 3. Now you just want to plug it in. So 5 times 3 plus 2y is equal to 11. Now you're going to rearrange. So 2y is equal to 11 minus 15. 2y is equal to minus 4. And y is equal to minus 2. That's all it is. x equal to 3 and y is equal to minus 2. And you can check it by plugging the x is equal to 3 and y is equal to minus 2 into the other formula. But I'm not going to bother. I'm sure it's right. And this is probably worth 4 marks, yeah. And so let's go to question 21 now. Th these are the ones that require the proofs and also give good marks. So what you want to do now is you want to, you'd want to uh, give proofs for this question. So it says B, C and D are points on the circumference of a circle, center O. A, B, and A, D are tangents. Angle D, A, B is equal to 50 degrees. Work at the size of angle B, C, D. B, C, D is here. So simply what you can do is you can find this angle and then say angles angles in a, in circumference are half, are double angles at, at the, uh, angles at the circumference are half the angles at the center. That's it. So what you can do is you can half this and you know that this is 90 and this is 25 because you've just halved it. So 25 plus 90 is equal to 115. Then do 180 minus 115 would give you 65 degrees. Alright. And you know that a, if a angle A, B, O is equal to 90 because it's a tangent. That's all you need to write to show that it's 90 degrees. This is 90 because it's a tangent. That's just... A reason for your for, for the stage of working 
this angle is 65 degrees and this angle would also be 65 degrees in that case because these two this and this are equal because angles touching uh, the same point on circumference content content contending from the same point are equal so a a b and a d are equal and which means the angle angle a d o and a b o are both 65 degrees so 65 plus 65 is equal to 130 degrees and you know that this whole angle is 130 so now you want to half that angle and you get 65 and so your answer is 65 degrees so angles at out, angles at center are double angle at circumference so you have to half it and make sure you give that reason for your working so now we are on question 22 and we've and it's only been 35 uh, minutes in this video and we've already done most of the paper which shows that it's not it's not a very hard paper compared to the new spec uh, okay let me scroll down a little so I can have space to draw it right, okay so right, it says draw a histogram so the formula for a histogram is uh, frequency density is equal to frequency over class width so frequency over class width so this would be 3 25 divided by 5 is 5 36 divided by 10 is 3.6 24 divided by 20 is let me try let me just do that quickly 24 divided by 20 is, is 1.2 1.2 yep, 1.2 so this is 1.2 so let's just draw a graph now so I'm just gonna roughly estimate that this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 and this is 5 all right so the first one is 3 so 3 so 60 to 65 would be there then going down from there would be there and then say the next one is 5 so 5 is all the way at the top so we draw a line all the way at the top then you want to do 65 to 70 and then you go down and this is it then there is 70 to 80 which is uh, 3.6 so 3.6 would be almost there then you go down from there and there is an 80 to 100 which is all the way to there is 1.2 so 1.2 is almost there so let's just draw a line from there to there and done that's all it is and that's your easy three marks achieved and now heading to the next question, which says work out the estimate for the number of cars with a speed of more than 85. Well, I can't do this because I literally just took off the thing. But all you have to do is you have to, or 85, find 85 on here. So 85 would, would 85 would probably be halfway according to me in the question. And let me just attempt the question to make it easier for you guys. Screen sketch. And let me just roughly estimate how it was before. I think it was almost there. There. Uh, I think, yeah, the second one was the highest. It's almost about there. This, I think the next one was almost 3. Yep, 3. The next one was 1.2. So it says with more than 85. So it's hard for me to explain. Uh, but all you have to do is you have to make your way into this one. So 85. So just imagine you're going fifth, a fifth, or five over twentieth of your way into the whole thing. So a quarter of your way into this, and that's what would give you the estimate of the number of cars that were speeding. It's hard for me to explain, but you can learn it easily on BBC, as I mentioned earlier. It's a really good site to learn stuff on. And uh, now it's time to do uh, simplify fully. So what two numbers multiply to make minus four, and two numbers multiply to make three? So that would be x minus uh, so minus 4 and plus 1 or plus 4 and minus 1 so plus 4 and minus 1 yep and and now oops one minute one minute guys seems to be a problem yep there was just a small problem let me just redo that for you screen sketch and then so this would be x uh, plus 4 and x minus 1 over so now this one it has a 2 in the front minus 5x plus 3 and I suggest you use the AC method so 2 times 3 is equal to 6 so we want two values that multiply to make 6 and two values that add to make minus 5 and what two values do that well we know that it could be minus 6 and plus 1 so this was a minus so minus 6 and plus 1 so 2x squared minus 6x 
plus x plus 3 that's how you do it then you want to simplify that so 2x x minus 3 and then plus 1x plus 3 so yeah so that's all you have to do and you and you'll get you get x minus 1 over here and 2x minus 2x minus 3 if you do if you do it properly you'll get you you understand how to do it i'm sorry this was minus to be honest this is minus yep i mix up the signs yep it was my fault uh so there yeah, that's all you have to do essentially uh and yeah you get this then these cancel and it becomes x plus 4 over 2x minus 3 and that's all it is simply and now let's just do this question as well with it so cross multiply first for 4 x minus 2 plus 3 x plus 2 put that over the x plus 2 and x minus 2 and you get it so simplify that so 4x minus 8 plus 3x plus 6 that simplifies to 7x minus 2 and that becomes 7x minus 2 over x plus 2 uh, x minus 2 you could leave it in this form or you could expand the x plus 2 and the x minus 2 which would simply become x squared minus 4 if you were willing to do it that far time to go to the next question I'm sorry I'm sorry about those other questions which I'm unable to explain in this question explain express the recurring decimal so x is equal to 0 0.281 the recurring values so now we want to do we want to get a value so 10x is equal to 2.81 reoccurring and you want to get another value that has 0.81 in the end so we have to times it by 1 2 3 so this is 3 so it's a thousand x is equal to 281.81 reoccurring so now you want to do this minus this so 1000 x minus 10 x is equal to this minus this so 281 minus 2 is 279 and so 990x is equal to 279 x is equal to 279 over 990 then we just need to simplify that if we can so I'm guessing it's a multiple of 3 so 3 times 9 is 27 93 over 330 which can be further simplified to 31 over 110 and I think that's the furthest you can go and that's that's the answer 31 over 110 uh, 25 the diagram shows a solid metal cylinder cylinder has a base radius 2x and height 9x the cylinder is melted down and made into a sphere of radius r find an expression of 4r in terms of x so let's press go to screen sketch all right okay so the cylinder is melted and made into a sphere of radius r so we know that the volumes would be the same so let's find the volume of this so 9x times 2x uh and it's pi r squared h which is a formula so we square that times that by pi so it's 4x squared times 9x times pi which would give us 36x cubed pi and now we need to find the volume of the sphere and how do you find the volume of a sphere well it's 4 over 3 pi r cubed and we know that the radius is the same uh, I mean the radius is changed so we need to make that equal to 36 pi x cubed so as you can see so the pi's can cancel then we can multiply a 3 on both sides and then divide it by 4 so it's the same thing as doing uh, uh, times in by 3 divided by 4 so times by 3 times 36 by 3 you get a value and then you divide that by 4 or we can divide by 4 first and then times it by 3 so 36 divided by 4 is 9 and 9 times 3 is 27 so r cubed is equal to 27 x cubed so r cubed r is equal to cube root of 27 x cubed so r would equal to 3x and that's all it is r is equal to 3x and we've given the expression for r in terms of x and these are the ones that give you good marks as well uh, and now 26 the graph of y is equal to fx is shown on each of the grids on the sketch on the grid sketch the graph of y is equal to fx minus 3 so minus 3 means you're going negative 3 but but you know that you're changing the x-axis which means you do the opposite rather than going negative 3 you have to go positive 3 so there 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 and there so I'm just going to roughly sketch that and this would be go here so roughly sketch that graph would be like that 
and that's how it would look so you want to move the unit up by three and now to head to the next question I'm sorry about this uh, on this grid sketch the graph of <coughs> y is equal to 2 f of x for this question it's interesting <coughs> because it's telling you to do y is equal to 2 f of x and you know that it's applying to the y and you know that you want to multiply it by 2 so they want you to stretch it so how do you stretch it by 2 well the points just go just double basically so rather than the point being uh, 6 it would be it would be more wider so it would be uh, so this point would become this point this point would become uh, well, times it by 2 was the same then in that case this point would become times it by 2 so it would be more over uh, here this point would go off the graph and this point would also be almost over here so you know that the graph would be stretched by 2 and the graph would almost look like that almost because the graph is being stretched by 2 we can't really do much to see it but basically you're multiplying it by 2 so you're stretching it even more but I'll go through these kind of questions in the late in later videos and I hope you guys enjoyed this video it was my first maths video so I don't I don't know how well it went for you guys but I hope you understood how I done all these questions and if you have any concerns or anything just give me an email and I hope that I'll be putting your future maths videos so like comment and subscribe bye